Hot news is Mark Sanchez will be the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Hot news is they're talking about getting rid of Preska. Jeff, whatever his name is, I can't pronounce it. Dak Prescott, okay. They're getting rid of Prescott. Yeah, Prescott. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're talking about getting rid of Prescott and possibly getting rid of Romo. Um, they're going to get stacked on defense. Don't underestimate it. This is not done um, by any shot. But like I said, what I'm counting on is Mark Sanchez being the quarterback because he likes to drop the ball. Yeah. He'll throw, the inter- he'll throw interceptions. I mean, he'll choke that whole game. Are you listening? No, no. It is time finally for the NFL season to get underway. Wouldn't you love to be a fly out in Santa Clara right now? They're not allowing any press to come out there and watch anything. And I imagine it's for security reasons. So nothing gets leaked out to benefit the LA Rams. <laughs> no Billa Bell checkism. Billa, 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 don't you like that name for Billa Belichick? No Bill Belichickism, because in this case, everything has to be kept hush hush. The Rams cannot have any secrets. Chip Kelly and company have kept that place airtight. You will not know a thing, but I'm dying to know what they're doing. We're not getting any reports out of Santa Clara right now. It's making me nuts because normally we get a little read out every day of what's going on out of Santa Clara. Nothing, nothing. Ah, okay, gotta breathe. Breathe. Remain calm. The game is coming up soon, and we'll find out everything that Chip Kelly's going to be doing. Meanwhile, I know, I know. I just want to say a few words about it. Bruce Miller messed up, all right? We've talked about it ad nauseum too much already. But I feel bad for him now. I'm not, a, I'm not mad anymore with Bruce. I feel bad about it. I feel sorry for him. There's something wrong with Bruce. This time last year, remember... He had another situation with a wife where he blasted her phone to bits. Obviously, and this has to be the case, here's a guy that goes to the wrong room and in the wrong hotel, and they say it was because of his drinking. Well, maybe the drinking shouldn't have been done, but he did. And it should be understood that this is an accident. But I wonder, does Bruce have other issues? Because even if you go into your hotel room, and you go and you discover that somebody's in your room. The first thing on your mind is to beat them up. See, that's not normal. I mean, if you come into the room, you probably say, hey, what are you guys doing in my room? And somebody would say, uh, this is our room. You must, have a, you must be making a mistake. So what would you do first? Would you threaten them? No. You'd probably go downstairs and you'd ask the people at the front desk, uh, yeah, I'm Bruce Miller. Uh, there's some people in my room. And of course, they looked down the registrar. Uh, Mr. Miller, we don't have any, we don't have you registered at this hotel. And then of course, maybe you'd snap and you'd realize that you made a mistake and you'd leave. You don't beat people up. So Bruce, obviously, there's some kind of imbalance or some kind of a problem going on here. So I have to feel sorry for him. I'm not mad anymore. I feel bad because he ruined his career. And I imagine there's an impact going on in the locker room. This is the thing that worries me the most. If you're a teammate and he's been with us for a number of years now, You've grown to know Bruce in a way that's kind of close, kind of friendly. He probably has an impact around the locker room. People like Bruce, I imagine. He looks like a likable guy, right? No more Bruce Miller. I'm just hoping it does not have an effect on the guys going forward. So we wish Bruce the best of luck. I I mean, I'm missing him already. Now that I've calmed down and I'm not mad anymore, I miss Bruce. (laughs) And then we go to the cuts. The cuts... (laughs) <laughs> the cuts made no sense, but listen, here's the thing. What happened with the cuts, I figure, is this. First of all, we lost. Garrison Smith is somebody we all agree on that should not have been cut. You look at the numbers, and they start to make a little more sense. Garrison Smith had a skill set that should have been retained. Now, he's the only guy I have questions with because of the fact that Garrison Smith, we don't have a nose. We have one nose tackle and Mike Purcell. He couldn't need spelling. But then they say versatility is a key here because Purcell can play the nose tackle. So can Quentin Dial. They just picked up Taylor Hart. He could probably play the nose. So you got a lot of versatility there. But I would think that even nose tackle would include Garrison Smith because he also has the added benefit 
of being able to rush the passer. He's very good at that. But what I think the 49ers were looking at is the fact that versatility plays key here and as well as experience. He's a new guy. The other guys are not new guys. The 49ers want nothing but hardcore battle-tested vets. Now they have them. Look throughout that lineup. With the exception of DeForest Buckner, everybody else is pretty much seasoned. Ronald Blair. But these guys showed a little something extra that's going to be beneficial according to O'Neal. And if he thinks they're hot, then that's what wins out here. So who are you going to get rid of in order to keep Garrison? I know what you're saying. I agree. Will Hoyt should have went. He has experience. They're looking at only polished people. They got rid of every youngster on the lineup that doesn't have at least two years or at least two years or did not just get drafted. If you came in as a UDFA, you were excused. That was the bottom line. And they went heavy as far as keeping people on the defense. Here's what I believe on that. They address the issue. Everybody's given Kip Kelly's offensive system the trouble about working the defense too hard. The 49ers have built up forces on the secondary and the defensive line that they can keep fresh the entire game. You thought about that? I'm, I'm believing that's what it is. And then you move into the wide receivers. We're kind of thin on all the offensive, all the specialty guys. The offensive line, deep. We got people. We can refresh. We can bring people in. Anybody gets hurt, we can bring another great player right in. Heavy on the trenches. We're going to win these wars in the trenches, as it should be. It still looks a little scary as far as the wide receivers go. You got Burbage. He's the only rookie, right? But then you went out, you got Curly, a vet. You've also got Patton, a vet. Torrey Smith, a vet. These guys all know what they're doing. And it also comes down to maybe who did the best in the classroom? Who comprehended? Who can execute the best? We can't afford mistakes now. And then with the addition, well, the only guy they brought in, the one guy that might be able to make a difference as well. Rambo! Yo! Let me talk about Rod Streeter. How'd you know I was going to dare you talk about him? 6'2", 195 pounds of freak that has a 37-inch leap. True. He has had a couple of bad seasons, Rumbo. Yeah. But it's looking good coming out of Kansas City this preseason. Woo! <laughs> Do you know that boy covers 40 yards in 4.3 seconds? I heard. Ooh! Get him ready for Monday night is all I'm saying. I'm gone. <laughs> I was about to say, Streeter could be the freak of the week. And I agree. He could be a welcome addition to the program, and he could make a difference. Some people even think that Streeter may be better than Patton. Others have said he has a history of getting hurt. We'll see. Oh, let's, I got to get you to this right now. By popular demand, I have been requested. <laughs> You've seen him on the weekend postseason and some other things we do on the weekend with the fan gatherings. Let <laughs> us now. Go and talk to the one and only Big, what I call him Big Wow Bill. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> good to see you, fam. Come on in here, man. I'm, man, I've been, Bill, I gotta tell you, man, people saw you and I said, I made a suggestion yesterday and I said, man, I need to talk to this guy one on one. And the board lit up and said, yeah, get, get him one on one, man. Get him one on one. So I said, Bill, here you are, man, one-on-one -on -one with Bill. And Bill, I think we ought to make this a weekly thing, man, because you've always got good news and whatever news, bad news for us sometimes. It don't matter, man. I just want to hear from you, Bill. So today, first of all, I want to know, after they made the cuts, Bill, is there anybody that got cut that you think got a bad deal from the 49ers? Mom. Two. Uh, I think we got rid of Corey Lamar. That was uh, a bad deal. Yeah, Corey Lamar, yeah. I liked yeah. Was that a bad deal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we should have kept him. All right. Um, uh, Bill, I, I, I think wait, that Prince. Wait a minute. Though, why do you think we should have kept Lemon Ye though? Uh, because uh, I think he would have progressed under Kelly's system. Uh, I think we would have did something. I think he would have did been a beast. Um, he'd have been the guy to help at least get uh, Eric Armstead or DeForest Buckner some sacks, where the guy would have had a problem throwing because he would have been afraid, or if he would have. 
Corey Lamar would have uh, got some picks. So right. uh, that's like not very smart. Now, Prince Charles, I can kind of see he's kind of short, but his speed, I really ain't got a chance to watch the preseason on that. But uh, I'm thinking they should have kept him a little, but they could have. The rest of them, I looked at the views. Well, I'm thinking, okay, well, that was good. They cut him. That was a good thing. Okay, so so some well, guys some guys we did hold on to that you really wish the 49ers would have let go. Did anybody like that on your list? Well, uh, later on, it's, he's going to come off strong. Uh, I see he's going to come off strong, but so did Albers Gerback for the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> True. He came out strong, but when it came time to step into the Super Bowl, AFC Championship, he just couldn't win it. Yeah. <laughs> And, and the guy that reminds me so much of that, that he's got the fire, he's got the will, but he's not a, a championship quarterback. And I think he was overrated. He was, like, extreme. And people were like, okay, why, why are you bashing him? Well, they're going to see. You know, like I talked about Tim Rattay back yeah, yeah. in the day, uh, Jeff Garcia. Uh, I'm going to talk about Blaine Gabbert. <laughs> Plain and simple. I knew and, I knew that's where you were going. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Finish. Finish that up. And Go ahead. I'm I want explaining. Hear. I mean, he will come off strong, but eventually going to choke. And as we burned the Ali Smith jersey, we should have not. We should have saved that lighter fluid for Blaine Gabbert because they're going to be burning it <laughs> very soon. <laughs> Mark my hey. words, they will be burning it. Hey, but you're saying he's going to start off strong. Now, now, why would you think he'd start off strong though? Because uh, he wants to keep the job. Well, you. <laughs> That's true. And, and the thing is, he's going to get hit so hard in Dallas, he's not going to be right again. But I don't know about Dallas, though, because Dallas has got a, a so-so defense right now. Are you, are They're you cheap in? hitters. They hit you cheap when the play is over. They like to hit you cheap. If you think about many years when Steve Young was done and he slid down, they hit Steve Young hard, gave him a concussion, to where Jacksonville, all they had to do was finish him off. It's true. That's a good point. But you know what? The flag so, will be thrown. And, so they, and they don't. They don't like Blaine. Dallas does not like Blaine, so they put him out. Wait a minute, they wait a say, minute. okay. How do you know about that, though? I mean, what, it, Dallas has a personal problem with Blaine Gabbert? Yes, they do. What is it? Because he hasn't I, played I don't that know. many times. My brother-in-law is in Texas. He had a bunch of buddies. Yeah. And uh, in there, and I talked to him like last night, and they like, well, when he gets in, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna finish Blaine because y'all ain't got Kaepernick now. Oh. All we gotta do is take Blaine down. And then what y'all got left? Good point there. As a matter of fact. So they're not counting on Pounder. Well, yeah, oh, I forgot. If anybody oh, needed a starter, that should have been Chris Pounder starting. I forgot about Chris. I guess we still have him left. All yeah, right. we needed a trade. What we should have did was trade Blaine Gabbert for a draft pick. We should have kept uh, Jeff Driscoll, trade him a couple years for starting him. And then, um, you know, but now I still think it's not too late to make that choice. You know, he started him as a quarterback. If if the owner's seen this, get rid of Blaine Gabbert. This is your only warning. Oh, by the way, for uh, what was his name? The uh, commissioner, Trent Baalke. Oh, 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 general manager. Yeah, yeah. GM, general manager. Trent Baalke Trent. and, and uh, Chip. Yeah, yeah. They're fighting for the jobs. Why are you going to put an idiot behind the back? <laughs> Evidently, you ain't fighting that much because you really don't care. <laughs> He, he's, he's not a promising quarterback. Yeah, he put on a few. He's a one-hit wonder. Yeah. That's what I call him. He's a one-hit wonder. No, wait, are, we talking, gonna, are we talking about Ponder? Or are we talking about... Uh, who are we talking Gabbard. about here? Gabbard. Okay. Gabbard. It's, just, it's Gabbard. I, just, yeah. I don't feel comfortable. I gave us more wins, but if we keep Gabbard as a starter, then we could go 7-9. and nine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. As a matter so of fact... If we, they, if, we, if we get rid of him and put Kaepernick back and he learns the playbook... Yeah. We'll go to the playoffs and possibly, depending on how healthy he stays, yeah, yeah. possibly a Super Bowl victory. I like that. Wait, wait, wait. Save if that stuff, we though. we get rid of Gabbert, Gabbert must be out of the picture. He what is not, it? cannot be in the equation. Well, this is his last year. I mean, he's on the, this is his contract year. So, you know, the 49ers don't have to renew his contract. If he really sucks that bad, he's out of here anywhere. But Right now, I, he looks good. Right now, he looks good. Now, yeah. Now's a good time to get at least a second or third round pick. Take advantage. He's a one-hit wonder. Oh, I yeah. see it. I, I seen the stance. I knew. I called many fluke quarterbacks. I was right. Um, Alex Smith. We cut him a little too soon. We traded you, him too soon. Is that right? You, you, is it, you thought you, even at the time? Did you think that was cutting Alex Smith too early? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because we would have kept, kept, kept a fire under Kaepernick. That's a good point. 
But then again, you make Alex Smith sit down. I think he was getting paid a lot of money at that time, so they couldn't really afford to do that. So yeah, that's the way that goes. Kansas City has a habit of picking up all our quarterbacks. You notice that though? It's pretty scary, isn't mm-hmm. it? You guys, is that how you became a 49er fan? Because Bill is coming out of Kansas. Is, is that how you come to know the 49ers? No, the story about it when I was, uh, I think, eight years old. Uh, I was trying to, my dad, he, he was from Illinois, and he wanted me to be a Bears fan. So, but he wouldn't go force it on me. He got this book of like a bunch of stickers back in the day when you had the Houston Oilers and all that. Yeah. Uh, laid it down and said, pick a team. Well, I looked at the SF first, yeah. and I looked at the Saints. Yeah. Broncos, I was looking at like three or four times. I'm like, man, this is an ugly design. I don't, I, I don't want <laughs> nothing to do with it. So, and, and and they would, and my other family's like, pick the star, pick Cowboys, and I'm like, eh, no, nah, I just, I just don't feel right. That just. I don't like blue. We never have liked blue. Uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what I wanted. You know, I was a Boy Scout, a Cub Scout. So yeah. I was originally pointing towards the Saints. Yeah. But then I wasn't all the way sure. And, it, you know, I really was hands up. And I got to watch a little bit of Joe Montana right. do his magical comebacks. And I started liking him. We had this neighbor. And his neighbor's telling me the history of the Saints never went in the Super Bowl. They call them the Aints. Never going to be nothing. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then here we have Joe Montana, Steve Young, and Jerry Rice, and Ronnie Law, and yeah. all, all of them. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll, he, go, he showed me this jacket that was really tight, really cool. Yeah. And he gave it to me, and he was like a buddy of mine. So then that's how I began to like the, uh, you know, like the 49ers, but I really got deep into it when I was over at my aunt's house, when Steve Young was uh, going against the Cowboys in 1994, yeah. the NFC Championship, Right. when Dallas was trying to go for three. Yeah. And uh, I made a bit with my aunt. I said, you know what? I'm getting tired of y'all dogging on my Niners. I'll tell you what. If the Niners lose, I'll be a Cowboy fan for the rest of my life. <laughs> but if the Niners win, I don't want to hear no more junk from y'all. <laughs> yeah, and then when, that, when, that, when that drive came in, can they go for three? Nope. That was it. That's all she wrote. <laughs> You, I bet you got a bunch of stories. We know what what I want to get to now. That's that's, that's uh, we're gonna get, we're gonna do a whole show on your uh, on your stories one day. But listen, give me some of that other news that you're talking about. Everybody stands on it. I mean, we're waiting for your news. But Bill, what do you got today as far as hot news? Hot news is Mark Sanchez will be the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Hot news is they're talking about getting rid of Preska. Jeff, whatever his name is, I can't pronounce it. Dak Prescott, okay. They're getting rid of Prescott. Yeah, Prescott. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're talking about getting rid of Prescott and possibly getting rid of Romo. Um, they're going to get stacked on defense. Don't underestimate it. This is not done um, by any shot. But like I said, what I'm counting on is Mark Sanchez being the quarterback because he likes to drop the ball. Yeah. He'll throw, the inter- he'll throw interceptions. I mean, he'll choke uh, that whole game. He's a turnover machine, no doubt about it. Right. That's it, why we didn't assign him. We actually, the Niners looked at him yeah. first. Anything else, and, anything uh, else though? Anything, any, anything related to the 49ers? Uh, well, right now, I think everybody's staying where they're staying right now okay. because of Blaine Galbert. Not many people like Blaine Galbert. <laughs> uh, Odell, don't, o, Odell Beckham Jr. don't like Blaine Galbert. <laughs> uh, a few of the other guys that I was talking about, I yeah. can't remember in the back. I'll have to think about it with my hand. They, they just don't like Blaine. They just don't like Blaine. Blaine. Not oh, man. No, I'm... I don't even like Blaine. <laughs> I, could, I, I had an no, idea. If he wins a Super Bowl, I'm going to say it's the defense that did it, not him. He won't get the credit ever for me. <laughs> well, that said, now, if things stay the same, I'm, I'm scared to ask you now. What are you predicting for us as far as wins on this season? Blaine is quarterback for the whole year. I'm pushing 7-9, and nine, but we could go 4-12. and 12. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Get rid of Gabbert. <laughs> okay. Or you will have another nightmare. Jesus. And we can't fire Chip on this. It's not his fault. <laughs> True. Because it wasn't him that set the quarterback. It was uh, Trim Balky who told him who the starter is going to be. Okay, now if we put your preference in, your preference is, I imagine it's Colin Kaepernick? Yes. He what? took us to the Super Bowl Two NAS, two NFC championships. Okay, well, give me, give me his record. What is his record going to be if this season for the 49ers? If Cap if starts, Cap predicts, if Cap starts, and he comes in through the season. We're looking at a twelve and four, maybe an eleven and five. 
just because Blaine starts first. All right. Uh oh, and, and those losses that Blaine and Cap will come in and make everything right. I don't care. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. Because he only needs about four or five weeks to get in shape. Because Cap is just out of shape. And he's still mending up a little bit, as everybody knows. So, yeah. If, if Blaine Gabbert starts against the Cowboys, they're gonna, Dallas they're, are going to win that they're game. Gonna try to, oh. Simple but, as that. But, Bill, we're playing at Levi Stadium. We don't have any it advantage. It doesn't matter. Blaine's a choke artist, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I just, I'll tell you, all he's, he, he's like... He's like Albers Gerback, and oh, by the way, when I say Albers Gerback and the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah. before he played for the Chiefs, he played for the 49ers. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, there it is. I mean, it's today, it's bad news, Bill. It's not looking good in the future if Gabbert continues to be our quarterback. Bill, it's time to go. Give me an Evan Conner 3 2 1, Bill, and give me that Levi Stadium hollow, will you please? 3 2 1. Niners! <laughs> I love him. I love him. But listen, I'm thinking about bringing him back every week for just a small segment at least. I got to hear from Wild Bill. You know what he does? What he does for the entire 49er fan base, he kind of gives you that little, he takes the edge off of things. I like him, okay? Well, I'll bring it back just a little bit for every week and uh, get some news from Bill because the guy keeps up on things. Wow, Bill! 40 letters! Supreme news, dude! <laughs> okay, time for Monday Night Football. And hey, I tell you, before the game, in your face, at your place. I'm gonna do that again. And then I'll melt off into the woodwork, let you enjoy the game, and come back after the game for the postseason. It's gonna be light this week because it's a Monday night game. But listen, get the app. Get the Rombo Sports app. You need to get that right now. It's absolutely free. But you're gonna need that because I'm gonna put the link in there for the postseason gathering afterwards. So you're gonna need that. And if, for security reasons, we gotta do it that way. And besides that, I got a lot of other good stuff on that app that you need to see anyway. If you haven't got it already, if you haven't heard about it, I love doing the Red and Gold Radio Show each and every night, Monday through Friday. It's become another huge hit. People come in and we talk about the issues concerning the 49ers all week long. All right? Looking forward to Monday night, fam. We're going to win this game. Yeah, we are. <laughs> hit like if you do, please. Share and subscribe. I cannot wait to see you Monday night. And I'll see you on the Red and Gold Radio Show. <laughs> Tomorrow! Ooh. Wait, 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 you gotta wait for the Seven, countdown. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, oh, Niners! Oh, this is crazy, mother! Oh.